all right so welcome back guys so till now we have discussed the two important sessions and two important parts of our disintegration effect one was using the n cloth system and second is using the classic particle systems along with some male expressions and scripts to control the behavior of the particles with respect to the motion of the cached mesh derived from the n cloth now if you have understood these two important phases this third phase which uh, where we're going to simulate the creation process of the fluids along with the motion of this cached mesh you won't be having any problem in that all just as like that you're going to explore some very very powerful attribute of the fluid that autodesk has just little bit hidden not hidden but it seems to be really very small it's just a game of a click but believe me that attribute is very very going to be very powerful all right so enough of the talks and now moving forward this is the result that we have got and we would be taking care of this result inside this course inside this particular lesson and this is hardly just you know 100 frame you know uh, play blast our total simulation process will going to be approximately 200 frames okay so we're just you know giving some little test and you now again the good thing inside this is that if you can see carefully that once the primary chunks are started getting disintegrated or start getting uh, moving away further from the original mesh, only from those areas or from moving sections, or you can say the breaking section, the fluid is, you know, coming off. The rest of the sections which you can see over here, there isn't any fluid. So again, we're going to use some, uh, you know, expression to control this behavior, all right? And for that, I had just a little bit modified the file since we don't, we, we no more need the access to the, you know, secondary particles. So if you're going to open the outline or you're going to find only a few things, there isn't any instances, there isn't going to be any secondary particles, second underscore ash. We are, I think, so we can, uh, I could say that uh, maybe lesson number four or five you know the the phase where we just have only the gold particles associated on this you know cached mesh so that you know we're going to play the timeline the gold particles should follow the mesh so if we're going to play the timeline for you you could see that although uh, i just need to switch off this light mode okay so you can see that uh now just going to reduce the opacity of the particles to make them you know, visible a little bit more so you can see here is that you know now again we have come back to the previous mode because i don't need the second underscore ash particle that was giving some you know uh you know a lot of time in in the calculation of the fluid also because you know uh, obviously the script is going on so the computational steps are getting increased so what i felt was that the fluid simulations are getting a little bit weaker not weaker but they are getting a little bit slower the computation process for the fluid was a bit slow when the you know all the scripts were used inside this thing so obviously why do we need anything else if we have to simulate only the fluids so again the story is very very simple the fluids will going to be get emitted from the particles and of course it will going to get emitted from all the particles but the point of consideration is that the behavior of the fluid will start taking place as soon as the particle is going to cross the velocity or the speed greater than one or whichever you know numeric value you like and again we're gonna do the same thing like the way we use our expression uh, you know the time expression with respect to the die point emission same thing we're gonna have here also so moving further I need to create a fluid container and this fluid container will the size isn't going to be any problem because we're going to use the you know auto resize so that we're going to get that we're going to take care of the entire things and let me just gonna quickly uh, adjust the values and the settings so we'll be taking care of the size let's say 15 is to uh, 20 by 15 as told you that we don't need to bother from the size the particle will gonna manage everything on its own okay we just need to take care of the fact that 
it shouldn't uh, be left from the negative y sections because we're going to use the boundary negative y rest will going to be the none okay because we don't know that where the particle can go so we'll not we'll not going to you know uh, bother or you can say uh, make the fluids bound and the base resolution we can put that thing to 75 just for a uh, test let me just gonna play the timeline back and and of course we need to have the ammeter also so for the ammeter we do have the fluid node selected we need to go to select the uh, ash and so gold particle system and we can say that at it contents emit from the object the emitter type will going to be the omni only and we don't need to have any other change inside the density and we're not going to use the heat and the fuel so for, for this reaction the density will going to be the only in the primary source of the fluid emission in terms to the opacity and in terms to the to the buoyancy density everything so just going to create a fly and close so with that you can see that the uh, uh, fluid emitter is being associated with the ash underscore gold particle system. I'm going to change the background again and of course we'll just start now working upon the attributes the content session for the fluid nodes. So let's just go to the display we're going to put that thing to the bounding box and inside the dynamic simulations we're going to change the damp value to 0 0.010 and the high detail solve we're going to be all grids sub step since we are you know taking care of the particle system so it, it, it may could have happened you know uh like like you know i have noticed sometimes when very fast moving particles will gonna you know cross the uh container of the fluids and that doesn't look good this is just because you know if the uh, sub steps is small and the fluid emitter is also small so uh if the size of the fluid emitter is less than the size of one centimeter then the voxel grid will going to get affected so to reduce that we're going to increase the sub steps so i think four will going to be the good start and the solver quality you can put that thing to 50 45 50 whichever you like you know solver quality 50 will going to be good simulation rate scale we're going to be one will we don't want the fluid to be really very fast instead if you want you can dip down to 0.75 i can recommend that too and for that we need to use the ambient sub steps only then this value will going to get benefit of course, we're going to use the auto resize. Along with that, we're going to strictly use the resize to emitter this time because the particles will going to ha are you know scattered all over the surface of the mesh, so it need to be get you know uh, under consideration if we're going to use the resize to emitter. And the resize margin, we're going to put that thing to three just to avoid any you know further collision of the fluid to the emitter. It doesn't want the fluid to get flattened from any of the surface moving forward this time for the density we want the reaction you know the dust or you can say the ash is going to get settled on the ground no doubt but initially it should you know move upward so the binds would like to recommend for 15 the dissipation i like to go for let's say uh, 0.75 will be a good start maybe one will going to do one to 0.75 we don't need any noise because this will going to be a very soft version of the dust and the gradient force we're going to use to approximately 10 and with that the swirls we're going to be a little bit higher let's say 8 to 10 because we just don't want the you know uh, continuous streak of the particles okay and we don't need to use the turbulence or if you want you may good use just very little amount of the turbulence let's say uh, 0.25 and the frequency will going to be 0.2 uh, and the speed will going to be 0.5 all right so that would be uh, perfect. Even the strength, you could go to 0.1 as well. Okay, we just want a very little amount of the turbulence inside these reactions. The transparency, obviously, we're going to be very less. So I guess 0.8 should be a good start. We don't need any drop of shape. The color, you can you're going to use some intelligent passive system. So that won't going to hold you for much but just for the you know vis uh, visibility point of view i like to get impact of you know some dusty kind of the color and the color input I like to set to the density increasing the slider of the input bias the most important thing is opacity section the way the fluid is going to get look so we can put that thing to somewhat like this and 
the spline so that we have a soft moving smoke and don't do something like this okay it will gonna have a harsh impact upon the smoke and it will not it will become a crispy smoke rather than a soft moving so soft moving smoke should be somewhat like this okay and that would be good all right so perfect and of course you know in terms when it comes to the rendering section the render interpreter should be set to the smooth otherwise it's going to give you you know very uh, thicker voxels rectangular voxels for just the visual purpose lighting need to be activated shadow opacity need to be 0.5 only and i'm going to change the ambient color to uh, somewhere like this ambient brightness should be 0.3 and we don't need to use the real lights for that uh, let's say 0.5 for the y-axis and 0.25 for the z so that would be okay i guess so that just all for the settings of our fluid container now I'd like to move in the next lesson where we're gonna see how do we going to give the best settings to the emission of the fluids all right so let's move to the next lesson